Welcome back, everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to start creating spheres. Uh, there's actually many types of spheres. Spheres. There's like at least four that um, I know of that you, we can do. Um, there's the UV sphere, normalized, spherical, or whatever. I'm more about reading. And the isosphere. Um, so there's a lot of ways to do this. And this is a great site, an article uh, from Daily uh, Dev. Uh, Game Dev, Dev Daily, and uh, this is a great article of explaining how um, how to create spheres in a lot of different ways, and they give you pseudocode too on how to implement it, which is really great. Makes things a lot easier to um, kind of get started and understand uh, how to go about it. Um, what we're going to deal with is really the UV sphere, or sometimes maybe called the polar coordinate sphere, because basically that's how um, planet Earth is. You know, like GPS is set up with the longitude and latitude. So we're going to be building the UV sphere. And instead of just basically following along with the pseudocode, we're going to start doing this in more reusable fashion. Um, uh, here's a quick example of what we're going to do first. First, we're going to build a path. And as you can see, this path is a half a circle. Now, instead of just creating all the points in a, in a sphere, we're going to just, like I said, we're going to create a path, and then we're going to have, create a function called a lathe. And a lathe is kind of a tool, the like woodworking tool, uh, that kind of spins a piece of wood around, and then you can kind of shape it. Uh, that's how you know, like uh, table legs are created. Um, and so, sometimes it's called uh, the functions. Th this type of function is called like a loop. So you can, we can call it a lathe, or we can call it a loop, whatever. Um, so right now, I'm just calling it lathe because I like to work with tool with wood sometimes, so um, it makes more sense for me. So. We're going to create a path, and we're going to just loop it in a spherical way, just going around the circle. Uh, and that's basically what a lathe does. So, And that will eventually create our sphere. So if we go back to our code, no, let's not have lathe open yet. Uh, in a previous lesson, we, we've had, um, no, I don't remember which one, but we had a function for mesh. I think that was part of our spline, if I remember correctly. Yes, mesh and dynamic mesh has been moved out of spline and put into a new file called fungi extend. So that's why we, this fungi extend here is a new object and then we just add it in there. So this way, if I have spline uh, loaded up on the same page, uh, there's no conflicts. So dynamic mesh is gonna live here now officially and so is mesh. And um, Triangle strip, the original triangle strip function, apparently had an, some issues with it, uh, especially when we're trying to do lathes. Um, there's a lot of math going on. It's kind of complicated. Um, I actually managed to optimize it, stream, stream it down. Because we're doing a lot of things in here. We're doing um, division, uh, flooring. Um, we're doing some actual multiplication. Uh, we're doing some modulus stuff. And then eventually addition. Uh, we're doing a lot of math to basically the, the idea behind this function was that for every vertice, we're going to calculate what row and what column it belongs to, and then we can then generate our triangle strip. Um, all this stuff overcomplicated things and causes issues uh, for me. So I went and redid the, the function, and I slimmed it, slimmed it down a bit. Um, you can read what these comments are. And right now we're not longer calculating a loop. Um, column and rows. We're still doing columns, but we're now figuring out what rows it belongs to. So the, the, the really the simple solution is that we're going to start at zero and we know how, how many columns we have. You know, in, a, in, in the, this lesson, in this bleh, the previous screen, I showed you that we have basically five columns. Um, just, just think of this as a grid, as a spherical grid. So let's say these are the columns and eventually when we loop them, those become the rows. So that one row has five columns. So we know that the next row starts at zero plus the, the, the column count. And then we just end up doing the, that addition throughout the rest of the function. So we just keep adding A and B in a loop. So this way we don't need to calculate uh, the row um, per vertice. And then we're only doing the addition um, yeah, we're doing the addition per, per column, but it's a lot simpler. Like I said, we took out a lot of the more complicated math, and the only multiplication is done once up here instead of in a loop. So yeah, we're just trying to find out where at the very end, um, 
you know, of the loop is basically. So if it's the end, and if we're doing a loop, we're going to, uh, you know, close up the loop just right. Uh, so that's our new triangle strip function. And then we could do, do our lathe. Our lathe um, function, um, it's very simple uh, trigonometry. So we're going to start at a certain angle. That's our origin. Now we're gonna pass. Well, let me let me start up here. We're gonna pass in our path array. So we, so we're gonna have an array of vertices to create our path, just like those five points. Uh, step is how many times around the circle we're gonna do. Ro rotation axis is how many. Uh, what axis are we gonna rotate by? And outvert is our um, output array that we're gonna say everything's gonna be saved back out again. Um, so again, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna define a starting angle and then we're going to calculate what angle to increment by so uh, pi times 2 is 360 degrees in radians and we just divide that by how many how many rows we want because steps is basically how many rows we want we want to create and everything else is just regular variables that we're using so for every step you know for every row you know we're going to calculate its, its, its um, rotation angle we got to get a cosine and, and sine. And in trigonometry, when you're doing like circles and trying to determine x, the cosine is usually x and sine is y. And since we're gonna, we want to rotate on a y axis, y won't change. Y has to stay the same. So in, you know, during the y axis, uh, x is is done with the cosine, and uh, z is our new y position. So if you you know if you're doing 2D to 3D, that's what's happening here. And uh, you know, right before we calculate all, all the rotations, we, we save our vertice and we just rotate the vertice. And all this math equation is coming from this one site. Let me just go through it really quick. Uh, it's a really pretty neat site. It shows you the, all the math of how to do rotation in a 3D way. And this site is really cool because it shows you the picture of rotations, shows you the actual equations, and then actually shows you how it's supposed to look like in a 4x4 four four matrix, which is kind of neat. Um, so this way, you, you, can, you can see how rotation is done So in a matrix. If, it's, if you want to rotate by the z-axis, these are the positions you put them in. Um, if you're going to rotate by the x-axis, the cosine and sine stuff happens more. In uh, in a center and Y should probably happen kind of like crisscrossy way. Um, and in case you don't understand these equations, it's just this Y times cosine of an angle. So if you see this, you know that's that's what it, that's all it really is. And it's the cosine of the angle is happening up here. So that Q is our rad. So that's what Q is, and uh, on that page, if you want to, if you want, if you're looking at that page and trying to see how it all fits, um, and then that main equation, you know, y cosine Q, z cosine Q, you know, it's happening here, and depending on the axis, and that's a lathe. That's all it does is we take a path and we're going to make a bunch of rows out of it in. Um, we're just gonna basically just repeating it in around a, a 360 way. Um, you can always build more functionality in here, where we have like maybe a starting axis, a starting angle, and an ending angle. So this way, you, maybe you can lathe like half a circle in three dimensions. Um, but for now, I'm this is built as you know a whole 360 angle. Um, maybe down the line, or if you guys need it, you know you define your own origin. And you define your own ending, and then between the two angles, you then divide your steps. Uh, if you want to do, you have more. If you want more control over your lathe uh, function. So now we're going to go into our primitives, and we're going to have a new function for our primitives called polar sphere. And uh, polar sphere, pretty simple. We have a vert steps. How many? Uh, you know, how many steps to do our vertical, and that's. The, what I showed you in the beginning was five points, those five green dots. Horizontal steps is basically how many rows we want to go in, in a circular fashion. And radius is just the distance of all the vertices. Um, everything's pretty simple. We start with an origin again. We do an increment, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, again, it's just more trigonometry. You know, we just calculate our, our angles and radians, 
do our cosine and sine and simply just multiply by radians, a uh, radius to actually push the points to the exact position or exact distance away from the center that we want. And then we just create a v, quick v, VAO out of it. And then if we come back to our test, uh, we have our extent function added. Um, our shaders are mostly uh, unchanged. Um, for our uh, DOM shader material, I set the draw mode to points because we want to see the points. And uh, we have our low poly, I'll show you that at the end. And then we have our sphere. Again, you know, we're going to pass in our columns, our rows, and how big the sphere is. And then, you know, we pass the sphere's VAO into our uh, rendable. That's our, you know, shouldn't really explain this. So that's, you know, there you go. And, oh, and that, everything we just explained, I explained just creates this. So now we're going to go back into our primitives. We're going to get rid of that because now we're going to start using our lathe function. So we're going to want two output uh, variables. We want our, our rayverts, which creates our mesh, and our index. So for now, we're just going to do our lathe, and we're just going to render out a video that only has the vertices. So if I refresh, there you go. It loops that thing in a spherical fashion. And if we want, we can make it much more dense. We can, let's say, oops, not that much. Let's say we want to make our columns more dense. We refresh, ta-da. Now we have 10 dots that go around per row. But then we can make our rows also more dense. So let's say we do 15. Uh, so if we're gonna repeat that one, the half circle 15 times, and now we have this really nice dense sphere. So basically going from a low poly to a more high poly um, sphere design or mesh. And you know, for for good measure, like again, we can choose its radius, and we refresh, and our sphere is a lot larger. So if I undo it, go back to our low poly sphere. There you go. That's what we want. So we're going to use that to play with. So next, so we're going to go back to our primitives. And now we're going to add our triangle strips. Now we're going to connect the dots and define all the triangles and quads. So if we do that, comment out this line of code, and then this one that actually creates a video with our vertices and our indexes. And, um, and our rows is basically our path. Vertical. Okay, we got our rows and columns. So our columns is basically our path array. You know, we have the five points, but each vertice is three, uh, has three elements in the array. So that's why you divide by three. So that gives us our actually total, basically that gives us our uh, ver vertice count. So, you know, we have, you know, times three um, floats in that array, but it, that's how many vertices we're calculating. So it's vertices and rows. And... You know, we close up the loop. So if we refresh, we might have, that's right, we need to do something else. We're still drawing points. Now we need to, uh, say, triangle strips, because that's what we're doing now, triangle strip, boom. And there is our sphere. And just for fun, let's get rid of that. Ooh. I want to undo that and uh, give it a new material. We're going to use our low poly material and refresh. And there's our and there's our circle. And there's our low poly circle that has five points. And you know, let's and let's see what it looks like when we uh, define it a lot higher. 10, 15. And refresh. And there we go. Now we got that uh, UV sphere. Oops. So there we go. That's it. And uh, I guess I'll sh quickly show you the shader. Um, the, the new poly shader since the last lesson now uses the Fong lighting instead of some cheap, uh, really bad lighting uh, thing I put together. Um, it uses, uses Fong lighting that we had in, um, in a, from a long previous lesson. 
and um, I just fixed it up so it works with our, the current version of um, our fungi. You know, we have our layouts. Uh, we now use UBOs. At the time, we didn't have UBOs. Um, different uh, naming conventions. Uh, and I added the little potty thing that I'm kind of working on to see, trying to get, uh, to try to get the quads to kind of get cut in half um, visually, so you can see that the the triangles in between. Sometimes it it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I think in an instance for the high poly, do we, yeah, that's ten. So I gotta have to hard code it to ten here as well. Um, the a lot of these things I have I name as US constants need to be will become uniforms in the future. So this way I don't have to stop hard coding it. So that's our uh, vertex shader, and then this is our fragment shader. Um, a lot of the stuff. A lot of the, like, uh, our strengths in the, in the previous lesson, they, they existed inside the function. Now I'm putting them outside as constants. Again, there's a U value, a U at the beginning of the names because they're going to be uniforms in the future. And um, the, the code is mostly the same. Um, it's just calculating normals. That's why we don't have normals uh, being generated uh, for our sphere because we're, we're um, calculating them in real time per pixel. Uh, trying to also calculate our uh, low poly factor. Again, in the previous the previous lesson, actually, we talked more about the low poly factor that I'm trying to I'm working on. Like I said, it's not 100% working, but it works for the most part. Um, and then the lighting is pretty much the same. I just probably renamed certain variables to make more sense uh, nowadays. I changed the order of certain things so it makes more sense. I think before I had lighting, multiplying base color but it makes more sense to have base color then apply lighting afterwards it, the math doesn't really change um, but it makes more sense in the order of operations and how you see things or how you how i interpret things in my mind you know here's a base color and you assign a flashlight to it that's how i visualize it so you know this this is my flashlight uh, so if I have it set to 10 by hard coding it, you'll see that some quads will then get subdiv subdivided a little bit better. Um, some don't. I don't know if it's just because it's a lighting thing because they just, they just share the exact same normals, but they shouldn't. So, Or it's just triangle ships in general don't work very well or I'm just not doing correctly. Um, again, there's, there's, no, there's no code. I'm just for this. I'm just trying to figure it out myself. Um, so yeah, there is our sphere, uh, and it renders and it uses lathes. And again, we can we can use lathes for a lot of things. Um, we can make odd shapes. We define a path uh, like a bowling pin. You define the path of a bowling pin, spin in a circle, and voila, you have a bowling pin in three D. Um, you can do maybe a complete circle, and then transform it away from the center, and then you loop it, then you create a donut shape. Uh, so the less that's why I'm going this approach instead of creating a function based off um, the pseudocode. Because uh, like I said, lathes, even though we're doing a little bit extra work to get the sphere, in the grand scheme of things, the lathe function and the triangle function is reusable and we can do more than just spheres. Like I said, we can do pins. We can do anything. You can shape anything you want. Um, the next milestone is really to the build King Kai's castle from Dragon Ball Z. It built like the planet. So that's our sphere. Uh, the house on it is... Uh, is a half a circle, but it has like this little half circle dome on top of it. So I might use splines to define the top and the bottom and get the points in between and then lay those points. So like a lot of, you know, um, uh, the road, um, I'm just going to build the road and then off center it from center and then loop it. So basically doing that donut shape, but except uh, having just a circle, I'm going to have a road um, that they'll, they'll get loops in a giant, um, ring shape so like you can do rings too you know it based on the the starting shape that you're you're, you're looping um that's what you that's what you're gonna get it's just, it's just a loop it's a lathe um <clears throat> so yeah and then uh hopefully at the very end i want to see if i can do uh trees so um so we're gonna hopefully have a tree a house a road and a nice little planet hopefully it'll be in a low poly look like this so the planet will be green the house will be whatever the tree will be brown the road will be white um 
So yeah, that's it. That's most of the lesson. Um, next lesson, I'm going to just quickly, uh, a viewer wanted to do wireframes. I'm going to probably just take this example and um, build a shader and probably another function that triangulates the the triangle ships into triangle faces. So this way we can then render them in a wireframe. Um, so that will be the next lesson is really just a continuing option, um, a continuation of this a little bit and just wireframes uh, for the viewer. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. but um, So you're definitely going to do it in the next lesson. And um, but then we'll continue on trying to build King Sky Castle. So uh, after the wireframes, we're going to build the road and then maybe the house and then eventually the trees. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned some new things. We have some new toys we could play with. You can experiment with new shapes. Um, make any shape you want, then use a lathe to, to see what the points look like. So uh, hope you have fun. Uh, like, subscribe, whatever. And um, see you guys in the next lesson.